I want you to meet Donald Kaiser. Back in the early 2000s, Kaiser was a top State Department official and advised then Secretary of State Colin Powell. But in 2004, investigators got reports that Kaiser had carried on an affair with a Taiwanese spy, so they raided his home. FBI agents found 3,559 classified documents in Kaiser's house from the State Department, NSA, and CIA. Records that were reportedly discovered by his wife in their basement after a renovation project. She also happened to be a CIA officer. In 2005, Kaiser took a plea deal to serve a year and a day in prison for the unlawful removal of classified material. The prosecutor said that Kaiser's imprisonment was, quote, a warning to others in positions of public trust. Wasn't quite the warning they may have wanted, Donald Kaiser was the last senior American official to go to prison for mishandling official documents. Sandy Berger, Bill Clinton's former national security advisor, paid a hefty fine for taking papers from the National Archives, but he managed to avoid jail time. Cases like this are rare. I mean, how often do you see, for example, a sitting president with a, quote, habit of shredding documents that are supposed to be preserved, as 11 sources told the Washington Post? Is it common for a president to eat a document after meeting with his personal lawyer? Because a former Trump White House aide said she witnessed just that, though the then administration denied it. Trump aides also denied reports that his domestic staff found documents stuffed down toilets. Imagine having to draft that denial. And how often does a president leave office and head back home with 15 boxes of White House records that the National Archives had to send agents to recover? Yeah, about that. You may have heard about some related news on Monday. The FBI executed a search warrant at Mar-a-Lago, the South Florida resort home of Donald J. Trump. The former president was not there at the time. Eric Trump says he was the one who told his father the news. It is historic and unprecedented. As you have no doubt heard by now, no former president has ever had their home searched by federal agents. You'll hear that again in the media, a lot. And it's true. But then again, no former president has ever said and done the things Trump has said and done. Maybe your first thought was, which investigation is this relating to? January the 6th? His pressure campaign to overturn votes in Georgia? His finances and taxes? There are so many investigations. But a source familiar with the matter tells NBC News that the search was tied to classified information Trump allegedly took from the White House to his Palm Beach home in 2021. You know how Trump called Mar-a-Lago his Winter White House? Sadly, federal records laws don't recognize that designation. They even broke into my safe, Trump wrote in a long rambling statement Monday, a statement that opened with these lines. These are dark times for our nation as my beautiful home, Mar-a-Lago in Palm Beach, Florida, is currently under siege, raided and occupied. It's not yet clear what documents the feds were searching for or just how sensitive they were. And you know that if there's one thing conservatives take seriously, it's public officials like I don't know, presidential candidates, improperly concealing official documents like, say, emails. For what she's done, they should lock her up. She's disgraceful. It's disgraceful. Truth will be suppressed no longer. Yeah! Lock her up. Yeah. Lock, her up. lock her up. That's right. Get, that's right. Lock her up. Democrats accountable, everybody, right? Yeah. Fire Fauci. We've got to investigate Hillary Clinton's campaign. Yeah. Lock her up. Lock them all up. The party of Lock Her Up were not happy with federal agents turning up at the home of their hero. Conservative media lost its mind on Monday night. But when we get power back, it's time to hold everyone accountable. The military leadership, the civilian leadership, the civil surface, those in Congress who've abused their power. There is no justification for sending 30 friggin' FBI agents to the former president's compound in Mar-a-Lago. This is the worst attack on this republic in modern history, period. The FBI right now is the Gestapo and use the appropriations process to choke down the FBI and choke down the Justice Department. This is a wake-up call for those in Congress to be able to use the tools at their disposal to defund the FBI, to ask the right questions, and to prepare for a church-style commission next year, if given a Republican majority, to dismantle the FBI into a thousand bits. 
The party of law and order has had it with all of this law and order. House GOP leader Kevin McCarthy tweeted, I've seen enough. The Department of Justice has reached an intolerable state of weaponized politicization. He then promised more politicization if Republicans took back the House and threatened Attorney General Merrick Garland, quote, preserve your documents and clear your calendar. I'm sorry, what was that? Preserve your documents? If that's not ironic enough for you, there was Marjorie Taylor Greene. Back in May, she attacked the Democrats as, quote, the party of defund the police. On Monday, after the search of Mar-a-Lago, the Republican congresswoman tweeted, and I quote, defund the FBI. We'll have more on the Republican reaction and the violence it could bring later on the show. But already the conspiracy theories are blossoming. It's a fascist plot by Joe Biden except a Biden White House official told NBC News that the administration had no advance notice of the raid and White House aides told the New York Times that they only learned about it on Twitter. That's how an apolitical law enforcement agency is supposed to work. And anyway, this news actually crowds out Biden's big domestic news as he signed the Bipartisan CHIPS Act on Tuesday and prepared for the passage of the landmark Inflation Reduction Act. We'll have more on the sitting president later on the show as well. But so far, this week appears to be all about the last president who now could face real federal penalties for his alleged carelessness, shall we call it, generously, with classified material. If he is the target of the investigation, if he is charged and found guilty, like Donald Kaiser before him, he could, could face jail, fines, and even maybe disqualification from future office, at least in theory. Donald Trump may never be held accountable for the alleged obstruction of justice outlined in the Mueller report or for begging other countries to send him dirt on his political enemies. He may never be held accountable for alleged hush payments to porn stars or for trying to overturn an election and fomenting the first mass assault on the U.S. Capitol since the War of 1812. But maybe, just maybe, he could be held accountable if he broke the law on official documents and maybe, outside the right-wing media bubble, Tens of millions of Americans are okay with that. Joining me now, Asha Rangappa, former special agent in the FBI Counterintelligence Division, now a senior lecturer and assistant dean at Yale Law School, and Kim Whaley, law professor at the University of Baltimore Law School and author of How to Read the Constitution and Why. Thank you both for joining me. Asha, let me start with you. As a former FBI agent, how big of a deal is it to have the Bureau execute a search warrant at the home of a former president, enter his residence, open his safe? How significant is this in American history? I, I mean, it's it's very significant. This is historical. And I can guarantee you that no one in the Department of Justice wants to do this, right? I mean, they understand this is not their first rodeo uh, in terms of a very politically sensitive investigation, and they know what comes with this, that every part of this investigation is going to be reviewed with a fine-tooth comb, the agents who work on it may be attacked personally, um, all of them are basically putting themselves on the line. And so, in addition to the high legal bar for getting a search warrant, and then the high, you know, internal bar for the uh, attorney general guidelines for politically sensitive investigations, I think there's an even higher bar that they would have only taken this step if it was absolutely necessary and they believed that there was, that this matter was so important and so urgent that they really had to remedy the harm that was being, um, you know, put out there by the fact that these documents were remaining at Mar-a-Lago. Lawyer Mark Elias drew our attention to a rather important point on Twitter. If someone is convicted of destroying or concealing federal documents, they can theoretically be disqualified from holding public office. But how real is that a possibility for Trump, do we think, at this point? Well, this has never been tested. The only Supreme Court case that I could find that was relevant was from 1969, and it involved um, wrongdoing by a member of Congress, and the Congress tr tried to stop, not seat that person. Uh, they wouldn't pay him. The sergeant in arms was not going to let him in the building, and the court said, listen, the qualifications for officer in the Constitution, and in the Constitution for the president, it just says um, that he has to be or she has to be a citizen of 35 years old or older and have lived in the United States for 14 years. So I think that would turn into a major constitutional battle. Um, but of course, as you indicate, it is there. 
in that statute, there is also in the 14th Amendment a provision that expressly allows the United States Congress to pass a law forbidding someone from sitting in office if they participated in an insurrection. Of course, that's different from what we're talking about here with the Presidential Records Act. And it isn't because all of these things are potentially related, right? We, it's a very large place that they searched. We have not seen what's in the warrant. And just for viewers to remember here, uh, it's not just the Department of Justice, Merrick Garland, uh, Trump's nominee for FBI director, Christopher Wray. It was also a federal judge and the Fourth Amendment. Those are the hurdles that had to be overcome to justify the action yesterday. Yeah. Uh, it's very sad. There's so much misinformation out there about it. So, Asha, in terms of misinformation, you have the right wing, as we played some clips from Fox and others, uh, going on about, you know, the FBI overstepping its bounds. You have Lauren Boebert, Congresswoman, calling the FBI the Gestapo. You have Marjorie Taylor Greene saying, defund the FBI. Things that only the left used to say in the past about the FBI. Now the right is jumping in on the anti-FBI bandwagon. I would point out to our viewers that the director of the FBI, Christopher Wray, is a lifelong Republican who was appointed by none other than President Donald J. Trump. So when we're talking about a politicized bureau, I mean, what is your response to that line of argument that this is a Democratic Party police force? It's kind of nonsensical. <laughs> Yeah, Mandy, I, I can assure you that the FBI is not filled with leftist hippies. Um, I can promise you that. Uh, I will say, and I'm glad that you pointed out the parallels in your intro, that this is the exact same issue that they wanted Hillary Clinton investigated for and that she was investigated for. They got a search warrant to search her computer, um, you know, but they went through the same legal standards and they were looking for the presence of unauthorized uh, classified information. Um, you know, on on this on her computer where it should not have been. The difference here is that you have paper documents. And so, you know, the counterintelligence risk is potentially even greater at Mar-a-Lago, given that there is a lot of traffic coming in and out, that these uh, were potentially unsecured documents. And I will also add that in Hillary Clinton's case, remember that they decided not to prosecute because they couldn't determine that she met the high intent threshold yeah. that was needed to prosecute. Here, there is an a, a element of willfulness that, you know, the National Archives has tried to get these documents back. They didn't get them back. Um, the Department of Justice has gone down, and the search warrant indicates that even after all that, there were still classified documents on the premises in, pa in places that maybe were so not disclosed earlier. Kim, let's talk about search warrants. Donald Trump presumably has a copy of the search warrant. He's chosen not to release it. How important is it to see what's on that search warrant, to see what that judge signed off on, to see what potential crime Trump is being accused of? Well, he's not accused of any crime. The question in this in, in this moment in the search warrant is whether there's sufficient evidence um, to give rise to probable cause that there to, that there might be evidence of a crime in Mar-a-Lago. Um, you know, I don't think anything in this moment is going to persuade Trump supporters that this was a justified warrant. And let's for, not forget that uh, the former president spoke recently at CPAC and kind of outlined a very dark picture of American government if he gets a second term, which would be essentially dismantling federal, dismantling federal law enforcement and having everyone answer to the dear leader. It would be a full on authoritarian uh, regime. And so it's somewhat gaslighting to be pretending that the actual functioning of the rule of law to, to hold him in some measure accountable, even if symbolically in this point, and, and, and as was indicated, these people are putting their safety at risk to do this. It's it's very Kim, ironic. And I just hope we can hang on as democracy. As, as quick Americans. last question. Kim, quick last question for you. 30 seconds to go. For our viewers who are not Trump supporters, who I assume are the majority, I may be wrong, Explain to them that a judge wouldn't have signed off on this lightly, would they? No. Oh, no, of course. No. As, as Asha mentioned, uh, there are high bars, but particularly for something like a president, this is not just about taking documents out of the White House. We've known that for months. We've known they include communications yes. with North Korean dictator Kim Jong-un, right? So this is about what happened to the documents. Were there defense documents? Were they shared? Were they destroyed? Were there national security, et cetera? This is about the next part of the story, which we don't know in this moment.